All kids love to play with toy airplanes, but have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a real pilot? Look, there goes an airplane! Kids, I'm Pilot Dave. Well, I'm not really a pilot, but the real pilots have agreed to let me pretend for the day so that you and I can learn all about airplanes. This is a biplane, and in a biplane, the real pilot rides in the back. Okay, Dave, you got it! Wait a minute. I, I don't have anything. Wow, that was quite a flight. I'm glad the real pilot was really in control. By the way, I want to tell you about this airplane now. This is a very special airplane. It's a biplane. As you can see, it has two wings. This is a brand new airplane, but it's an exact replica of a plane that flew back in 1935. So how do planes fly? Well, let's take a look at the wing and see. If you notice, the bottom of the wing is fairly straight, but the top portion is rather curved. Now, what that does when the wind flows over the wing is it forces the air on top of the wing to go faster than the air on the bottom. It has further to travel. That creates a suction which lifts the airplane into the air. So how do we get the air to go over the wing? Well, come right with me. This is the propeller. And the propeller is like a big fan or a big screw that pulls the airplane through the air and forces the air over the wings, which causes the lift. It's really pretty simple. Looks clean. Pilot Ailerons. Vince is the man who really flies this plane. Cool He's going to show us how the controls work. Properly. The control stick is normally flown in the mid position like this. When we want the airplane to dive towards the ground, we simply push it forward. When we'd like to take the nose of the airplane and pull it up into the air, we'll pull it aft like this. When we want the airplane to roll to the left, we simply bring the stick over to the left like this. And if to the, we want to go to the right, we simply bring it over to the right. And of course, we've got pedals down below. And many of you are probably thinking, uh, one's an accelerator pedal and one's a brake pedal. However, those are called rudder pedals. They make the nose come left or come right. Now, a skilled pilot is able to take all of these different motions and combine them into one single motion. And that's what a pilot calls the pride and joy of flying, is when he gets to the point where he can skillfully maneuver all of these controls to make one precise movement. You can tell Pilot Vince loves his job. We'll see you later, Pilot Vince. The very first plane to fly was also a biplane. It was invented by the Wright brothers in 1903. It was first flown in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina.
All of the first planes were made out of cloth, wire, and wood. And they were all built by hand. Some looked pretty weird, and they didn't always fly. This was one of the first passenger planes. It's really strange. This airplane is called a gyrocopter. Back then, very few people got to fly in airplanes. And nobody could imagine what planes would look like today. Today, airplanes are fast and sleek. And flying is one of the safest ways to get from place to place. We're about to pay a visit to Southwest Airlines at an airport near Los Angeles, California. Wow, what do you think of my outfit? I really feel like a pilot now. Well, we've seen some small airplanes and what makes them work and how they fly. Now we've come to a busy airport where we're going to see some much larger jet airplanes and how they work. These big airplanes have to get gas, just like your car at home. The baggage is stored in a special compartment in the belly of the airplane. These baggage handlers have to be strong to carry all these bags and have to be very careful to read the tags so that the bags get where they're supposed to go. Hi, my name is Bruce Bennett and I'm the station manager for Southwest Airlines. Well, the airplane Southwest flies uh, a Boeing 737 and they hold from 122 passengers all the way up to 137 passengers. They go about 350 miles an hour they fly about 30,000 feet. If you come in close to the engines, before the engines are shut down, it's like a giant vacuum cleaner. And it will take your hat and, in, and your tie and anything, it'll suck it into the engines. And of course, those blades are spinning very fast, so it's very dangerous. And that's why we have all of the safety rules on the ground that we have, because it's very dangerous. Hi, I'm Christy Hernandez, and I'm a flight attendant for Southwest. And I'm going to show you some of uh, the features on this 737 aircraft that, you know, part of my job consists of. I'm going to show you everything that a flight attendant would do, okay? From the moment you step on the plane, we welcome everyone. We're like, hi, hello, good afternoon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to board you. So I help you sit down in these seats. This is a little lounge area. It has a little bit more comfort in here, okay? And if you step back a little bit more, we have the rest of our seats all have these little uh, tray tables that come down, okay? You can put your food there, your drinks. And I help you and I make sure that you're nice and safe in these seats with the seat belts. I have to make sure that everyone has their seat belt located right around them, okay? So you put your seat belt on for takeoff. During the course of the flight, I'll serve you your drinks. Here we have our Cokes up here. Dr. Pepper, all that good stuff. Straws. <laughs> Okay, we can make our coffee here, and we have stir sticks, okay. So it's just like a little kitchen. We can make all of our stuff up here. Flying is fun. I can hardly wait to see you real soon. Well, this is the uh, part of the airport that you usually see when you come to the airport. This is where you check in your bags, and uh, well, Pilot Dave's gonna help out a little. Here, let me, let me get this bag here. Put it on the conveyor. Whoa, oh, wait a minute. Oh, my, my, my tie is stuck in the bag. Thanks, guys. I, I'm really embarrassed. I don't quite know how that happened, but thank you very much. 
This, this is this is where the baggage goes, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> We're behind the scenes now at the airport. Usually they don't let people back here, but because I'm pretending to be a pilot today, they've let me come back. And you'll find all kinds of little trailers and tractors back here. Each one's a little different, and each one has a specific job. What they do is they service the airplane while it's on the ground. Now, this machine looks really cool. This is called an airplane tug. It's actually used to hook to the front wheel of the airplane to move it around the airport when the engines aren't working. Hey, here comes a big airplane now. I better let the real tug drivers take over. At a busy airport like this one, there are lots of airplanes on the ground and in the air all the time. You may be wondering how they keep from running into each other. Well, they do that by talking on the radio to the people up in that tower. That's the control tower. Hi, come here, departure. Have a nice flight. Hello, my name is Blaine, and I work in the control tower, and my job is an air traffic controller. And basically, the position that I work here, I talk to the airplanes that land and that take off. What they do is they, come, they call me on the radio, and they ask for clearance for takeoff, much in the same way that you'd probably ask your parents permission to go to a friend's house. Bonanza 858 Alpha, runway 26 left, clear to land, wind 240 at 6. Basically, I uh, use the radio, which I'm connected to right here, and the bright radar so I can determine them. And this is Ontario Airport, where we're working right now. These dots that go around here are the basic airspace that I'm responsible for. These rings here are five mile range marks to give me an idea on how far people and airplanes are. This is an airplane on a four mile final landing runway 26 left, which is the closer of the two runways. And uh, this is an airplane 10 miles northwest of the field coming inbound. Uh, this is uh, pilot Dave uh, calling the tower from UPS uh, flight 747 requesting permission to land uh, over. Dave, we see you, and you're cleared to land on runway 27 left. Uh, runway 27 left, uh, that's a Roger. 27 left, which one is that? I guess that one, we'll go for that one. We just landed at the United Parcel Service Hub in Ontario, California. These big planes don't carry people, they carry packages. Every day, millions of people have United Parcel Service fly packages across the country and around the world. Wow, now we've seen little airplanes and even bigger passenger planes. And now we're going to see a really big airplane. I mean, a really big airplane. In fact, this is one of the biggest airplanes in the whole world. Oh, by the way, you probably figured out that I didn't really land that airplane. These guys are the real pilots, and they give me a special assignment. Well, the pilots have given me a special job because I was such a great pilot and such a big help to them. They're going to let me chalk the wheel. That's what this is. Just put it down there, and it keeps the wheel from rolling when the plane is parked on the ground.
Now, to give you an idea just how big this airplane really is, if you were to stand it on end, it would be about as tall as an eight-story building, and it weighs almost as much, too. When it's fully loaded, it weighs something like 700,000 pounds. So how do you get that much weight in the air? Well, with one of these great big engines. As a matter of fact, they have four of these huge engines, and the way they work is they suck the air in the front, and then they squeeze it together, ignite it with the fuel, and then that forces the pressure out the back with more power than a huge torn tornado, and that drives this great big airplane through the air. And just like your car at home, these big engines need their oil changed from time to time. There's lots of activity here. The planes have to be serviced on a regular basis. They check everything from the big wheels and the landing gear to the very tip top of the tail. And of course, the packages have to be loaded and unloaded as quickly as possible. These big machines are specially built to help lower the containers gently from the airplane. Each container is full of packages. One of them might be headed for your house. The ground crew has to work quickly to unload the packages because more and more airplanes full of more and more packages are arriving all the time. This container is clear. You can actually see the packages inside. And if you thought the outside of this cargo plane was big, just look at the inside. It's huge. Look at all those instruments. I'm not even going to try to guess what all of them do. But I do want you to meet our pilot today. This is Captain Jim from UPS. And we're on the flight deck of a 747 airliner, a great big, huge airplane used for hauling cargo for UPS. Captain Jim, tell us a little bit about what all these things do. Dave, this is the steering wheel for the airplane. This lets you climb and descend and turn left and right. So that's like a steering wheel in a car. Yes, sir. Here we've got the throttles. In your car, you've got a rudder pedal, or I'm sorry, you've got a pedal on the floor for your throttle. And here we have throttles right here. So this would make Four it engines. go forward? Yes, sir. And these would shut those big engines down, right? All these instruments up here in front of you, Dave, they're to tell you What's the attitude of the airplane, whether you're climbing, whether you're descending, whether you're turning left or turning right? And you've got an airspeed indicator. It's just like a speedometer in your car. You see the, you see the numbers are a lot bigger than in your car, though, don't you? Go Here, this fast. speedometer goes up to 400 miles an hour. Wow. It's a lot faster than your car. How, how fast does this plane fly when it's actually? This airplane can fly up around 500 miles an hour. And how high? Oh, and how high? Up around 40,000 feet. And that's how many miles high? Oh, at 5,000 feet per mile, that's about eight miles. Eight miles high, wow. Dave, you notice uh, my feet are on the rudder pedals. You've got a set over on your side. And the rudder pedals are used when we're on the ground. The top of the rudder pedals are the brakes. And you just tap these lightly, very gently, and that'll stop this big airplane. When we're in the air, then, we use these rudder pedals to help us fly and to help in our turns. Captain Jim, uh, there's a lot of kids watching this that may want to be pilots when they grow up. What would you tell them? I'd tell them it's the most fun you can have. Being a pilot is the best job I've ever had.
Well, if you ask any pilot, they'll tell you that one of the most exciting and dangerous things to do is to land on an aircraft carrier. We've been real lucky because the Navy has given us permission to land on the Kitty Hawk, as you're about to see. Now, we're going to take this airplane out there. It's called a COD, and the most unusual thing about this airplane is that the wings fold back, as you'll see, and that saves space while they store the planes on the aircraft carrier. They're about to fold those wings out so we can fly out over the ocean and land on the aircraft carrier. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Commander Linda Schaefer Benaria. My call sign is Vegas, and you can call me Vegas today. We're going to be flying the C-2 Greyhound out to the carrier, and I think it's an experience that you're going to remember for a long, long time. Whether you get to go to the carrier one time or a thousand times, it's always an equal amount of fun. Now that we've met our pilot, it's time to buckle up and take off. Wow, there she is, the USS Kitty Hawk. It's a huge ship. But I can't believe we're actually going to land on that tiny runway. Here we go, hold on tight and watch the hook on the bottom of the airplane. It has to catch the wire in order to stop the airplane. Nice flying, Pilot Vegas. Now watch as the wings are folded up. That's so we won't take up too much space. There isn't much of it to go around on a busy aircraft carrier. We're on the flight deck now. This is one of the noisiest places you could ever be and one of the busiest. Also, it's one of the most dangerous because these planes land at more than 150 miles an hour and they've come to a complete stop if they catch the wire in three seconds. Good morning. I'm Captain Bill Pickavance, Commanding Officer of the USS Kitty Hawk. Welcome aboard. An aircraft carrier is a uh, is a seagoing uh, air station. It's a it's a uh, it's a ship that carries about 80 airplanes that can fly all different types of uh, types of uh, missions and uh, and do it at sea. We have F-18s, the Hornet, which is a uh, a very fast uh, very fast airplane that has the capability to drop bombs as well as fire missiles. The F-14 is also a, a, a platform that can shoot the bad guys down with their missiles. They have some real long-range missiles and long legs, and they can also drop bombs, so we use them for both. The A-6 uh, Intruder, that's uh, one of the funny airplanes with the big nose and the, and the uh, air refueling probe up on the uh, nose, is used for long-range uh, bombing when we have to go a, a very long distance, and they're also used for tanking. The E-2 Hawkeye, which is a big airplane with a big Big, looks like a big flying saucer on the on the top is a uh, is sort of our eyes when we're, we're down low down here we can't see as much as an airplane way up high he has a, a further what we call a radar horizon he can see further over the horizon so we use the e2 uh, to, to get out away from the ship and look for all the bad guys that could be coming in from the air the carrier onboard delivery airplane since we're away from land 
we don't have the trucks and all that stuff that you see uh, that you see coming in and out of your local towns and things. So we have to have all of our stuff flown out. All of our bananas and all of our mail and all of our people and all that stuff has to be flown out to the ship. We uh, we're shorter. We're not as long as a run as a normal runway on a on a uh, on an airport. So we have to use catapults and arresting gear uh, to land the airplanes. They have a tail hook that comes down and grabs the wire to stop it. And we have kind of like a slingshot on the, up on the forward part of the ship that shoots the airplane off. And the airplane goes from, about, from, from standing still to about 160 miles per hour in about two and a half seconds. tail hook for the E2C aircraft is used to catch the aircraft when it lands on the flight deck. It stops it from about 150 to zero in about four to five seconds. There must be incredible stresses incredible. on that cable You're right, then. incredible right. amount of stress. Well, thanks for your explanation. No problem, Appreciate Dave. Appreciate it. Hey, Dave, look out. Track 6650. Roger on that. Roger. I'm ready to put this plane through its bases. to the tower. Dave, wake up, Dave. Pilot Dave to the tower. Dave, you okay? Wake up, Pilot Dave. Pilot Dave calling the tower. Dave, you okay? <clears throat> Daryl, geez, I, what happened? I just had this incredible dream that I was a real, uh, uh, never mind. Thanks, thanks no for problem. all your help. Sure you okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Hey, kids, I'm Captain Bill Pickavance. If you like what you've seen, and there goes an airplane, and you want to be a naval aviator, stay off drugs, study hard, keep your motivation up, and you can do it. seen big airplanes, little airplanes, old airplanes, and new airplanes. But if you still want to learn more, the best place to do it is at an airplane museum, like this one in San Diego. There are some amazing things in airplane museums. Did you know that people used to think that the only way to fly was like a bird? Here you can see what the very first planes looked like. Today, it's hard to imagine that these fragile little planes could fly, but they did. You can see how they changed year by year and see some that changed history. Some museums show you planes that flew past the sky and into space. You may see more than history. You may see part of the future. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching and learning all about airplanes. I've had a great time pretending to be a real airplane pilot. So until next time, this is Pilot Dave saying, see you in the wild blue yonder.
Hi kids, I'm construction foreman Dave. I'm firefighter Dave. I'm pilot Dave. I'm truck driver Dave. And I'm truck driver Becky. I'm engineer Dave. I'm deputy Dave. And I'm deputy Becky. Join us as we explore all sorts of fun stuff and get in all sorts of trouble. Live action video for kids. Get in on the action and collect the whole series. In There Goes an Airplane, we'll fly all kinds of airplanes. This is one of the biggest airplanes in the whole world. There goes a fire truck. We'll see what it takes to be a real firefighter. Firefighters have to be specially equipped in the clothes they wear as well in order to stay safe when fighting fires. There's nothing else like it in the whole world. So get in on the action now. <laughs> and there goes a bulldozer. We'll actually drive some of the biggest machines in the world. It's like a great big shark's jaw. What it does is it bites down on the rocks and then crunches them into smaller pieces so that they can be recycled. He told me not to touch one of these. I shouldn't have done that. And there goes a truck. We'll learn all about big rigs. The fuel goes into the engine. It explodes and drives the pistons up and down. Bang, 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 bang. Wait a minute. This is not supposed to lift me. Wait, it's hooked on me. And there goes a train. It's all aboard for fun. As you can see, these engines are really big. All aboard. And there goes a police car. We'll learn all about police work and the neat equipment they use. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go fly. Live action video. It's big, it's exciting, and it's lots of fun. Hey kids, if you like the action you just saw, you're going to want to collect the whole live action video series. Coming soon, there goes a spaceship, there goes a race car, there goes a boat, and lots more. 247, David, come in for a call. 247, 247 David, that's, that's us. us. See, See you next time. time.